Recording has begun. Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. I would like to officially call this meeting to order. Uh, Madam Clerk, could you please do the roll call? Councilmember Goldsmith. <coughs> Councilmember Trollinger. Present. Council, Councilwoman Bryant Ward. Present. Councilman Jenkins. Present. And Mayor James, we know you are here. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, would you all please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mm. Great. So hopefully you all have had an opportunity just to uh, look at the uh, meeting agenda. And uh, if, if it is the will of the council, I will entertain a motion to accept the agenda as presented. Madam Mayor. Yes. I move that we accept the July 25th, 2023 meeting agenda as presented. Thank you very much. Do I have a second? Okay. Thank you. Any comments? All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any aye. Opinions? Motion carries. And um, for our minutes for uh, July 11th, uh, if you had an opportunity to look at them, I will entertain a motion to accept uh, the minutes. Madam Mayor. Yes. I move that we accept the July 11th, 2023 meeting minutes as presented. Thank you very much. Do I have a second? Second. All right, we've got two of them, so that is doubly good. Uh, any comments? All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any aye. opposed? Motion carries. All right, and uh, this brings us to our um, petitions and communications, our August proclamations. And we have one for National Traffic Awareness Month. And I believe that is you, Mr. Goldsmith, or Councilman Goldsmith. Yes. <clears throat> Whereas the children in our community will soon be returning to school, walking to and waiting in school bus stops. And many will also be walking to their school van. Whereas it is a shared responsibility to take every action possible to protect the children and all pedestrians in our community including educating pedestrians and drivers alike on ways to prevent traffic-related injury and death. And whereas the Governor's Highway Safety Association estimates that more than 7,000 firefighter pedestrians were killed by drivers in 2022, and whereas every year over 3,000 pedestrian-involved crashes occur on Maryland roads, and whereas the Council of the Town of Plato is concerned about the safety of the children and all pedestrians in the town and wishes to help ensure a safe pedestrian environment by prompting public awareness about and enforcement of posted speed limits in our neighborhoods and throughout the entire community. And whereas the La Plata Police Department will be promoting public awareness of this issue and educating drivers who exceed the posted speed limits in our neighborhoods and community about the dangers their speeding poses to children and all pedestrians. Now, therefore, we, the Council of Town La Plata, to hereby proclaim that the month of August 2023, National Traffic Awareness Month in the town of Plata, and all drivers are encouraged to be aware of it and comply with posted speed limits on streets within the community. Council of the town of Plata, Janine James Mayer, James Goldsmith, Councilman, <laughs> Matthew Trollinger, Councilman, Evelyn Bryant Ward, Councilwoman, David Jenkins, Councilman. Thank you very much. And it is so important with this traffic awareness. We also have a new light that is going up on radio station and 488. So that is going to be a change in some of our behavior. And we will be having a, a four-way stop on St. Mary's and Centennial. So again, we need to just be aware of that and drive safely. Thank you very much, uh, Councilman Goldsmith. Um, next is National Night Out. Uh, Councilman Trollinger. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I do have a proclamation for National Night Out, which is August 1st, 2023. Whereas National Night Out is an annual community building campaign that promotes police and community partnerships 
a neighborhood camaraderie to make our neighborhoods safer, more caring places to live. And whereas National Night Out enhances the relationship between neighbors and law enforcement while brings, bringing back a true sense of community. And whereas National Night Out showcases the vital importance of police community partnerships and citizen involvement, Whereas the National Night Out provides an opportunity for neighbors in La Plata to join over 38 million neighbors across 16,000 communities from all 50 states, U.S. territories, Canadian cities, and military bases worldwide on the first Tuesday in August. Now, therefore, we, the Council of the Town of La Plata, do hereby proclaim August 1st, 2023 is National Night Out in the Town of La Plata, Maryland, and all neighbors are encouraged to participate in or host block parties, festivals, parades, cookouts, and various other community events with safety demonstrations, seminars, youth events, and visits from emergency personnel. Council of the Town of La Plata, signed by Mayor Janine James, Councilman James Goldsmith, Councilman Matthew Trollinger, Councilwoman Evelyn Bryant Ward, and Councilman David Jenkins. Thank you very much. And while we're on that subject, I'm going to go a little out of order right here. Um, we do have a presentation for National Night Out. Would you mind doing that as well? Oh, absolutely. Um, so if I could have um, the King's Grant Homeowners Association President, uh, Gary Eisenbaum, come on up. Um, we are presenting you in the amount of $200, our grant uh, for National Night Out mini grant recipient um, this 25th day of July. 2023. I understand there is a special um, opportunity there for King's Grant residents. Can you say something for our residents of 15 seconds or less of what they could expect in the King's Grant community on Tuesday, August 1st? Is this way or that way? <laughs> Well, in King's Grant, we are well into our, our um, program to revitalize our community and get people back out in the streets. So one more time, we will support the National Night Out. We will have um, taco trucks and dogs. And I don't think we're doing burgers this year, but ice cream, events for the kids. So it'll be a very nice community event. And of course, we're expecting all of our first responders to show for what they can because we appreciate them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Goldsmith, Councilman Goldsmith, I'm having a hard time today. Could you please tell us which one you have as well? I have the uh, Washington Square in the amount of $200 for National Night Out, 25th day of July, 2023, in appreciation and recognition of your participation in Town of Plata's National Night Out Mini Grant Program. Uh, Washington Square is notorious for their ice cream social. And even though you want to try to take something away from us, we still have enough left over for the emergency uh, response to get in this up. But that's a big thing, and that we enjoy doing it, and I think it uh, builds camaraderie within our community. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you very much. All right, next on our agenda is a special recognition for two young men, and I'm going to have you both come up, and we're going to come down there. So this is always an exciting time when we are able to recognize our clients. Our clients here. And uh, these two gentlemen uh, were, they won national titles in Taekwondo. And there is even a connection. This is how small this community is. These two gentlemen had, now one of their instructors, Big Jake, they remember him as, and that is my six foot five son that uh, had a part in in forming a little bit. Maybe it's maybe it was a good target practice. I don't know, but um, we are super proud of you. And Councilwoman Brian Ward has a connection with you. And what connection is that? She used to be my son. Sunday school teacher. 
So it is a small little <laughs> So if you come over here, look at Tana. From over here, and we're going to present, and they say the same, except it is unique to you. Um, that's one right word. Would you read the citation for? I will, but when he was when he was in my Sunday school class, he was a tiny thing. He was so so small. I can't believe all of these muscles standing up here beside me. The, the Council of the Town of La Plata awards this certificate of recognition to Lucas Beach. Congratulations for earning a first place national title at the Amateur Athletic Union Taekwondo National Championships. The discipline required to earn a national level title is exceptional. Your commitment to excellence serves as an example for your peers and reflects great credit on yourself, your Jane, and the town of La Plata. Signed, Janine James, Mayor Town of La Plata. Congratulations. I'm gonna have to get a hug. And Christopher Blanchard received the same citation except with your name. So congratulations. That that is awesome. Keep up the good work. All right. You're gonna you're gonna go right here. We're gonna we're gonna bookend you and on to this right here. And you've got it. Wait a minute. You gotta see. So the bling is showing. Put it down a little bit lower there. There you go. So yeah, no. All right. Lots of victory. One, two, three. All right, congratulations and, and continued success to both of you. Thank you so much for representing La Plata and uh, Southern Maryland Martial Arts. Sorry. At this time, um, it's our public comment. If anyone would like to speak this evening, I ask that you uh, state your name, whether you live in the incorporated town limits, and if you could limit your comments to three minutes, that would be appreciated. Anybody? All right, moving on, we will go with our monthly reports. Chief, you're up. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Any uh, any questions to the monthly report? I will open the floor up to Council. Um, go ahead, Councilman Jenkins. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Councilman Jenkins, Ward 4. Thank you, Chief, again for the uh, update and the monthly presentation. Just uh, one comment and one question. I appreciate, uh, we appreciate the, uh, the uh, memorandum about the upward taking calls and activities. That was one of my questions, so that answered that. The other issue is, are, are, are there any other issues or concerns with respect to uh, activities at the hospital from your officers? Uh, nothing out of the ordinary that I know of. Uh, you know, uh, we just had a couple clear the hospital. They were there for a couple hours because of a mental health call, but it has nothing to do with the hospital, just uh, mm -hmm. what they encountered on the street. All right, thank yes. you. Any other uh, questions? Thank you very much and keep up the great work. All right, next is Director Harrington. Good evening. Good evening. Any questions for Director Harrington? Councilman Jenkins, go ahead. You're, oh, you're still muted. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Jenkins, Ward 4. Uh, thank you, Director Harrington, for your report. And I just wanted to, again, thank you for um, paying attention to the uh, GIS and uh, make the, making those improvements and awesome. tracking some information. So I think I just wanted to add that comment and say thanks for that process. All right, any other questions from council? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Director Harrington, so we're still working on the draft for the APFO? Yes. How far along are we with it now? It, it, the draft is there. Uh, it has been sent to the town attorney uh, for further revisions and review. 
So did it come back from him? Because it was with him last month. Did it come back and go back to him? Not at this point. It's a, like I said, it's a very complicated code. Um, and it's something that's going to take a lot of time to really go through and make sure that we're doing this right. Okay. So. Okay. If I may, uh, Councilwoman Ryan Ward, we did meet with the attorney last week, I believe it was, yeah. and we did discuss it. Uh, I'm also in review, so Jay doesn't. Our attorney is not the only one who uh, responsible for some of the delay. I'm also responsible for some of that. Uh, but as Director Harrington said, it is a very complex document with a lot of moving parts and trying to get things aligned. Uh, and, you know, we do want to get it right because obviously um, it's in the best interest of everyone to get it right. So uh, it may take a little while. We're hopeful sooner than later. Uh, hopefully we don't have that comment next month. Sure. Uh, within her report, <clears throat> or at least we can, uh, you know, report out some progress is being made. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, okay. um, Councilman Charles Ward, Ward too. Um, just to follow up on Councilwoman Bryant Ward. Is there a just a goal time frame um, as to completion? Not not to put pressure, but just so that we know, hey. Um, we're still in line or of course it's going to be this is massive undertaking right it's definitely as soon as possible we know how important this is um i've already gone through two kind of complete revisions and doing research and looking at other there isn't really another good municip municipality to compare to and counties work a little bit different than municipalities do so we're kind of writing this from scratch uh, so we did receive some input from um, Jamie Kendrick with Mead and Hunt on the traffic side. Uh, and then I did get some input from McCrone on the water and sewer design side. And now we're looking at the allocation side and how that's actually going to work. So it's, like I said, that's something that we're really trying to make sure that we narrow down and get it right. Um, I would expect, just because of the importance of this process and this document that's being put together that we would need a lot of time devoted to the different elements right that make up this project um mr manuel like how do you foresee the review of this once it gets to the final stage and the attorney has okayed it director harrington's on her fourth revision and it's it's as good as we can get it but we're going through the different elements like the traffic and the, you know, all right. each part. Yeah, it's a lot to unwind. And, you know, I could, we haven't really discussed it yet. So I don't want to drop anything on Janine, but we almost need a rollout to sort of explain it to the development community. You know, this is what it is. They, they're they familiar with adequate public facility ordinances. For the most part, the County of Charles has one. We deal with a lot of localized uh, local developers, but also, you know, someone of, uh national prominence they've dealt with them in other areas so they will be familiar uh, but it, it will be something that we'll want to sort of roll out and explain to uh the affected parties uh in the future you know these these are what our expectations are and this is the rules that will be applied now before that point though it'll be it'll be brought to council yes um and what i was kind of referring to was i mean it's not we, we can't do this in a normal business meeting because it would be it could take an hour in and of itself just to go through two two of the elements out of four or five right it'll have to be pieced out okay yes okay thank you thank mm -hmm. you all right any other questions thank you so much all right that brings it didn't even you know no introduction needed come on down director Stahl. i watched the agenda you did come on down all right any questions for director Stahl? thank you madam mayor i'm director Stahl. so on the projects for stormwater what's happening at on nandamori drive in the cul-de-sac we have to replace that pipe. Uh, the, the pipe has definitely rotted out over in there. And part of it, the problem is, is that the town owns the pipe under the road, but we have to then address the easement over across to the pond, which is somewhat of a problem in the situation. So it is a project on our list. Uh, we are currently working on a pipe up on Oriole that will be put in tomorrow. 
but it is definitely something, you know, along with all of the others that are, um, you know, were part of the original HOA, replacement of the pipe under the road is really no problem. It's the pipe going over to the stormwater um, facility that is somewhat in question because as you know, that's a rental community over there and that HOA uh, controls that pipe on that side of it. And we need to coordinate with them as to whether or not they're gonna turn it over to the town. So it is something that is on our project list. It's just one of those that's a little more challenging because of the easement issue. Sure, Is it? Um, will it affect the cul-de-sac parking? When we do it, yes, okay. because we're going to have to dig straight across. Um, there's an island uh, right in the middle of the cul-de-sac there, and the storm drain is literally right at the end of that island. It's okay. out in the middle, and the pipe goes, if, if I'm sitting there facing that little island, it goes straight across and right over to the stormwater facility over there. Okay. We did go down there, however, and clean it all out. So we went down and cleaned the whole thing because it was flooding the one night. But the whole bottom of the pipe has rotted out, and which is not uncommon for okay. aged infrastructure like that. And we did clean it out. And so it is back to functional again, but it will require a new pipe and will require some assistance to get the easements uh, okay. over to the town so that we can legally do the other part of it. Okay, thank so, you. Yes, ma'am. Councilman Jenkins. Thank you, uh, Councilman Jenkins, Ward 4. Mr. St uh, Director Stahl, um, I'm, I'm curious, there seem to be a number of projects, Oil Lane, Blue Jay Court, uh, Wales and Suffolk, they, they seem to have been on the their list or the list for stormwater management for a, a significant matter a long time. Is there a reason why they still remain on the list? Is, are, are they complicated projects or you just can't get to them? The, the, the answer is all of the above. Yes, they're very complicated projects. The one at Blue Jay, for instance, is 20 feet off of a house, 35 feet in the ground. Um, wow. There's no bottom to the pipe, and um, we're figuring out how to be able to pull a new pipe through there and to get a new pipe through it. Um, we have tried to do this in an economic fashion that fixes things at a reasonable cost. We have gone out to third-party contractors now. Um, we have one small pipe um, where we're trying to use... Um, uh, cast in place um, fiberglass insert inside the pipe. And the one small pipe up there at Morris Drive was $15,000 for the uh, the cast in place. Working within our stormwater budget, you know, we could do, you know, several projects. I, I would imagine the project at Blue Jay would probably blow my budget in stormwater in and of itself. And so we've been trying to work through these using our own um uh manpower um it's tough during the summertime because things are you know be working between people being off and that kind of thing um we we were up today working on oriel um trying to get a line fed through that to be able to pull the pipe uh, bob hardy's going to weld that for us tomorrow and um we will be able to pull it through with a cable but we spent the entire day today trying to get the cable pulled through the the pipe. And the problem is we go through normally with the jetter, but if there's no bottom to the pipe, the jetter takes a nosedive and goes, um, goes down in the ground and doesn't go through the pipe. And so we spend an inordinate amount of time trying to get these pulled through the pipe. These are all very tough projects. I think people assume that just because you know that that's a you know that's a two hour project it's not most of them are week or two week long projects that we're getting to and so you know i'm pulling them from other things um you know we had a major sewer problem over at the wastewater treatment plant i spent the entire day saturday working on a leak i, I drove 
I had to get Ferguson to open up to get parts from Ferguson on Saturday, got them to open up and had to drive to Upper Marlboro. It took me four and a half hours to drive from La Plata just to Upper Marlboro and back on Saturday. And so, you know, it turned into be what literally was probably, you know, a, an hour's fix once we got, once I got back home. But the bottom line is I had a whole crew of men for the whole day to fix a small leak. And so we we have a very capable crew, but, you know, in trying to work around, there are a lot of days where we have two or three spare guys. Once we have trash, for instance, where on Fridays we may be doing uh, yard waste where we're running three trucks and, you know, we, with vacations and everything else we're putting there and trying to work through special projects where we need you know, probably seven or eight guys between truck drivers, equipment operators, all those kind of things. It's tough. And I'm not trying to make excuses. No. But that's no, just I, I, the, that's the reality of it is, is that, and even when we fix things, people assume that, you know, things get fixed. Uh, you know, I would point out that over on Redwood Circle, you saw the pictures from one of the late, from one of the neighbors over there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that was a problem with two inches of rain in 15 minutes and it overwhelmed the stormwater system over there, but it was mm -hmm. designed 40 years ago. And, you know, even though we fixed everything in that person's yard, it backed up because the whole system was, was a little bit undersized. So we, we still fix these problems. We are making sure to get in there. We have to reprioritize things like with Nanjamoy, where we had to go in there and make sure that it was back open again. Um, you so, know, to uh, be honest, I would also point out in King's Grant, um, the, the, the we're still working with Mr. Scott all the time, trying to get those easements dedicated over to us mm -hmm. so that we don't put ourselves in legal jeopardy by working on things that are on the private side. And we're, we're trying, I mean, it, it's, it is a, it's a trying process. So, so thank you for, uh, educating me and uh, clarifying my bad assumptions thank there, you there are i will say over a hundred stormwater projects on the list if i'm not mistaken there's a hundred and thirty plus projects so it's it's a long list and we're working thank through you. it um so i just have so one i make no assumptions about your work i see constantly the length of time and the detail that goes into it just over the few years that i've been on the council so no assumptions just a question because it is a cul-de-sac just wonder what the plan was mm -hmm. um the other thing is with the um it um, professional um stepping down i know that you have a good command of your system that's over the SCADA system that's over there. So you would be okay if we didn't find anyone quickly to step into that. Um, I literally was texting our IT professional or emailing him back and forth um, while I was, uh, uh, you know, preparing for the meeting. And my final response was they were supposed to do the SCADA upgrade at the wastewater treatment plant on the 31st and the 1st. But I was not aware that he was taking the entire SCADA system down at the same time. We have two separate servers that run the exact same software, and it was always designed that if one goes down or you need to service one, that the other one was still running the plant. I found out this afternoon that they were planning to take the entire SCADA system down um, for this upgrade. And that's not acceptable. I can't do that. Uh, you know, if I do that, it changes my treatment process and I have to report that to MDE and theoretically get their approval for it in the long run. So my response back was, you know, do not upgrade the SCADA system until we get this straight because we have two systems that run in parallel and it was always designed that if one goes down, the other one continues to run the plant. There's too many adjustments that happen all the time. You know, it would require someone to be there 24 seven, making all the manual adjustments to the plant, which we don't have. And so I think, you know, I said to him just before I walked into this meeting to postpone the SCADA upgrade. Um, 
we do have a handle on it. We can certainly get Schneider through SciTech to help us, and they will always step in to help us on different upgrades. But um, we do need to uh, have a contract with them, and we will take care of that in the short term. So, you know, I'm not going to let it sit back and not be operational. So it should work. Thank you. Yes, as a follow up, uh, Director Stahl, um, thank you for telling us a little bit about projects that you have going on with regards to the King's Grant, kind of the continual easement process and, and signing things over. Um, can you give me a rough estimate as to how many we're still waiting on to get some of these projects done. Mm. Um, you know, I always want to be able to assist where we can and outreach. I know um, we've tried in the past and some people show up and some don't. Yeah. I, I would say if I had to guess, probably 50 plus private easements is my assumption, Mayor, is that? I would guess fair. So. <laughs> um, Mr. Scott um, is the attorney for the HOA. Um, there's the trouble with this is we can't step in and spend public money for what is now a private Understood. situation. And so we really shouldn't spend legal dollars. The HOA should spend those dollars. We're willing to accept the easements once they turn them over, but we really shouldn't spend public money on that legal process. And that's what causes hardship all the way down the line. People want us to do the easements, want us to create things for them. And that's really not appropriate in, you know, unless we have a special situation. So, um, I would say, um, I would give you the example of the easements that are behind the odd side of Wiltshire and down at the bottom of Suffolk. And I think you've seen some of the easement, the home at the corner of Wiltshire and Suffolk right there has a sinkhole in it. And that's one where I, I spoke with Ms. Curry again today. Um, it is a challenge in that it has not been recorded yet. I did try to get Mr. Scott this afternoon to see if that one couldn't get pushed through because there is a large sinkhole there. But currently, that's one of those that's in the private side. And when Steve and I met two weeks ago, um, I prioritized all of those coming down there. And it's... Some of that information just so that I can communicate. I know the mayor knows. Um, but it would be helpful because the mayor's got a lot of other duties too. That's fine. I'd right. be happy to I give could. you a full yeah. update on all of it. I mean, we do try to, you know, I did meet with Mr. Scott over uh, about two weeks ago at the wastewater treatment plant, and we prioritized all of those down that line because he asked me, he said, listen, I can't do them all at one time, but he said, give me a priority. So Melinda and I met with him. We looked right at the GIS and we went right down that line, all of those backyards right down. Um, and what in the 1033 case was the side yard kind of there. Um, and just said all of those were a priority for us. So out of the 50 plus, really, there's a wait, there's a waiting process for a number of them where they may have turned them over to their attorney. And it just hasn't been recorded yet. That's and so we can't. It could be now. Mrs. Curry said she had signed the document, but that she couldn't find out from Mr. Scott where that was in the process. Uh, Mr. Scott had indicated to me two weeks ago that none of those had been recorded. I think his assumption was that he would try to get them all together and record them all, so that they were all in similar pages, you know, in line. From from a recording standpoint, just so that if if I could get a list of just some of these um, items that we're still waiting the, the wait and see mode as far as the easements, 
um, just so that I can be prepared when residents come and complain okay. or have concerns about obviously the yards and the wastewater treatment situation, everything going on. There shouldn't be like a secret knowledge where or we have to go up three chains just to get something that should be public. Like, look, we're, we are ready to go as soon as these things happen because you've done your part clearly and we want that to be open and shared such that the process keeps moving forward instead of it being, you know, this is a process been going on for, you know, since the last group of council members. Oh, listen, I can tell you that ever since we created the stormwater utility in 2013, it's been an issue in all the neighborhoods. Agricopia is one where it's going to be a, you know, a big challenge. Um, King's Grant, Clark's Run. Clark's Run's a little bit different just because of the, the fact that the town owns a lot of the open space over there. In King's Grant, it was totally different because most of the open space was owned by the Homeowners Association. And so it, it became challenging. And right. it's not that we're trying to distance ourselves. I mean, to be honest, the easiest thing to do is hire a contractor, come in and say, look, here, do this. And we provide them the materials and do it. It's another thing to do it. A legal and appropriate way. Correct. Right. Where, I mean, you know, you know what I'm saying? I, I, it's, it's no different than procurement. Um, you know, trying to going out and saying, hey, go put that pipe in the ground is one thing. Going out and doing it through a pro proper procurement process takes some time, and that's challenging. I just think four sentences of transparency is greater than, you know, five paragraphs of, of, of explanation and apologies later, if you know what I mean, right? Sure. So um, if I can just get that information so that we can get it to the HOA, and they can get it to the right people so that they know, as has been the policy, the town's ready to go as long as those things are met. Sure. Thanks. Go ahead. Yeah, I just had a question. Uh, well, you're asking a question I should know the answer to. Uh, is there a mechanism in place that we could ensure moving forward that, say, I'm just going to use an example, the stormwater management bond, that we maybe do not release their bond entirely until all these easements are dedicated to the town. That is the sort of correct today. Today, right? Correct. We but do that today. It's just and, the older you know, Melinda, as, as I'm sure Janine would tell you, is is you know very tough on releasing bonds. Melinda, because she's always trying very hard to make sure that all the legal pieces are in place before we release bonds. Contractors are always mad at her because she doesn't. Um, she makes sure that every last detail is done. Positive, um, you know, and and I try and back her as best we can in that to make sure sewer and water is a little bit clearer because it's always been dedicated to the town. We do all the testing up front. With stormwater, it's usually at the end because it's the last utility installed you know, they have to go back and clean everything out. Whereas water and sewer, you know, I'd give you the example down at Pine Grove now. Most of Section K has already been inspected. We have water flowing out there because we have residents in that neighborhood right now that is working. Stormwater, we've inspected the installation, but we go back later at the end, once the streets are finally paved, making sure everything drains well. And so it is kind of a last part of the puzzle uh, when we come in there. So it is it is a little bit challenging with stormwater and we're pretty tough on it. We carry a bond for up to 10 years on that for the maintenance of the whole thing now. That just wasn't the case before 2013. Everything went to, and I, I still believe today that we made the right decision to bring it to the town. Um, we're not blaming the HOAs. We're not fining the HOAs like we would. We're out there trying to help solve the problem. What has happened to us is that the problem had built up for 30 or 40 years before that. There's a lot of failing infrastructure that should have been fixed by the previous owner but now it's all kind of it comes to roost to us and it's 
it has been an interesting process of catch up and we're still doing that. So. Director Spell, I have a quick question. Uh, the tarps and the tires over at Tillman Lake. Yep. Um, are we going to see those gone anytime soon? Probably not. And not I hate to tell. That's what I'd like. Do you, you do, do you know what's under them? Is that the salt? Yes, ma'am. Can we make it look like a beehive or something? Um, but because <laughs> it is, I, someone sent me a picture today going, what is this? Uh, the tires is just like the, the, the frosting on the cake, I think. Mayor, we hauled, um, we went in the salt business somehow. Somehow we created salt. Um, we built the dome out of the old water tower over there and we knew that it was going to hold 500 tons of salt so we filled it with 500 tons of salt and it's full um the state highway wanted us to move the salt out of the dome up there and get it away from state highway so we kept hauling it back we built a concrete block walls and we were going to cover it up as a temporary thing we hauled another 800 and some tons. So we had, since I've been here in 15 years, the town of La Plata only purchased 1,200 tons of salt. If I go back, we only purchased a total of 1,200 tons of salt. And we've used salt every year except last year that I remember. Somehow we hauled over 1,500 tons of salt back to the dome that they said was ours. Now, I don't know how we created salt, but I was trying to appease State Highway and we were trying to do it on a, you know, an, a, a temporary type of basis. But somehow we now have 1,500 tons of salt, which is an incredibly large amount of salt. Um, and we will try to... Um, put a more permanent structure up over top of it instead of having tarps, but I honestly can't leave it open to the weather. So That's I have to cover the salt. I have to ensure that it doesn't blow away in a storm, thus the tires all over the top of it to hold the tarps down. But we promised State Highway that we would remove all the salt out of the dome. Um, I don't think we will buy any salt in my lifetime, certainly not my working lifetime, which has been a good budgetary thing, but it is amazing how we ended up with a whole lot more salt because I felt like that 500 tons, the most I've ever bought in one year was 200 tons. Um, I have 500 in the old water tower that we fixed up. And I thought, wow, that's perfect for La Plata. It's just about the right amount. And State Highway wouldn't take it. They just said, you've got to take it out of there. And so. Sounds I, like a good project. And maybe Director Phipps, when she comes over and talks about Bee City, will have a great uh, idea about making a hive or something. And we can make it look nice okay. while still having 1,500 tons of salt, so. Another project. And no snow. Yeah, well. I hope not. I Listen, I nobody, you know, salt to us is honestly the problem with all of these pipes that we're talking about in stormwater. We've been our own worst enemy because you get forced to use something that's degrading your infrastructure. It's. You know, it's a corrosive product that flows down through all the pipes and, you know, creates a challenge for us in that situation. From a safety standpoint, you're somewhat required to use it, but we try. Well, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, any other questions from council? Could I just add a few things? I hate to do that. Did you not put it in your report? Come I, on now. Well, I think there's just a couple of things that we wanted to point out that were beyond. Today, we had a load of trash cans come in, which, as you know, are long lead time items and that the the residents want. And so I wanted to let you know that we did get a load of 400 cans in today, which was very positive because we are going through them at a rapid rate. The 24-inch gravity line that we ran all the way around to the Maples, 
is totally active. So the jail, the sheriff's office, um, the Maples pump station, we were actually able to remove that pump station. And so that this week is now totally live and active and all flowing back to the plant. And the good news is we removed a pump station. So that was totally positive. Um, as I said, we were working on the stormwater line there on Oriole. That's 120 feet of 12 inch pipe and that'll get pulled tomorrow. Um, one of the other things I wanted to point out, and I believe Merritt was through a contact with you, the FAA is considering donating another generator to us at 200 kW, which is actually could be extremely helpful to us because our generator down at the new Southwest Quadrant pump station got postponed again until next March. If we could get the donation from the FAA, it would be very positive because we would take that generator and put it down at Southwest Quadrant so that we could get that permit to operate that pump station. They won't give it to you without the backup generation, but if we got that as a donation, it would be extremely helpful. So I have been working with Tim out there to get that. So um, good. good, good thing. Um, the other thing I'd like to point out is that we got notification this week that Lennar is finishing up the 12 inch water line over at to Laurel Springs. So we have now upgraded the water line all the way down St. Charles Parkway to 16 inch. And we will now have a 12 inch line all the way through the Parklands neighborhood to Laurel Springs. The last piece of that line to take it to Tillman Lake will be is in design with um, McCrone at this point, and that does not require an MDE permit. So we will be able to permit that one ourselves. So hopefully before the end of the year, we will be contracting for that to install the final piece of that line over to Tillman Lake. Um, that will give us the ability to buy up to a million gallons of water a day through that line. So the only uh, piece in that would be a purchase agreement, not a physical infrastructure problem. The physical infrastructure problem will be fixed. The big thing will be is just getting an agreement. Um, and the last thing, um, well, and I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Leave on a high note. Well, I thank will. you very thank much. You. I know you all are working so hard, and I appreciate that. All right. Uh, next up there is Karina. Come on, our treasurer. <clears throat> Any uh, questions for our treasurer here? Yes, Madam Mayor. So, Karina, on your first slide um, where you referenced the sewer, You've got 7.6 million in major facility fees has been recognized as of 630, 2023. Yes. The FY23 budget is zero. Yeah, we don't budget for that because that is not a um, budgeted item. That's based on development and that goes into a fund balance to cover the cost of upgrading for the um, capacity for that development. So we don't forecast that number and that's all reserved in the major facility fund. So when I look at the sewer category and it says a budgeted amount of approximately um, 9.8, 9.9 million, then you've got revenue in excess of about 10 point six or seven, and then you've got expense around six million. It looks like to me that would give a bear a positive variance. And so it wouldn't be zero. There is the budget, which right. we don't budget for. Okay. So the amounts that we get for the major facility is going into the fund for the major facility, the fund balance. The expenses like the projects um, for the upgrade of the mm -hmm. wastewater treatment plant, mm -hmm. that could be used from those funds. So it's, you have a budget line, but you don't budget for it. You've got well, revenue and expenses, and you're saying the budget is zero. Is the budget always zero? For that particular revenue. Right. But when I look at the sewer category, I see a budgeted. Yes. Well, you still in that um, 
sewer category, there's the sewer user fees that we collect. Um, let's see, there's um, there's other fees in there. Hold on, it's, I got it. It says 7.6 in major facility fees. You've got an asterisk by sewer and you've got an asterisk by that footnote there. Is that referencing the sewer? It's in the sewer fund. So the sewer fund consists of that revenue. That revenue is to upgrade like the um, mm -hmm. the wastewater treatment plant. So it's earmarked. It's it's um, it's restricted. Right. I, so, I guess I'm just confused when you have a budgeted well, there's column. The, well, there is. There's the budget amount, which is the operation costs, <laughs> um, like running the wastewater treatment plant, um, the pump stations. So I hear you. The, if I could help, Karina, in this, we charge each new building permit sixteen thousand two hundred dollars mm -hmm. in a major facility fee, mm -hmm. and it is totally for the upgrades because we have been getting so many new building permits. Mm -hmm. That number has gone up tremendously, mm -hmm. and so that seven, what that's allowed us to do mm -hmm. is actually cash flow the payments on the wastewater treatment plant upgrade, the Southwest Quadrant pump station, all of those have now been paid for out of cash. And once we then get reimbursed by USDA on that loan, then the payments on that loan would also then come from that major facility fee balance. Right. And so I just wanted to make sure right. you know, from, from the operational standpoint. I must be really slow on this one because I'm I guess I'm just seeing that you've got budget, you've got revenue in excess of the budgeted amount and in excess of expense. So I don't see how it's zero. Um, it seems to me that there will be a positive variance. And if you're moving that positive variance to another fund, I get that. But it, it's so, all in the sewer fund. So the reason the okay. budget is zero is because we didn't budget for it. But the revenue line has that revenue. That's the revenue that was earned. Um, got you. I'm clear on so revenue. But I got, see a line that says budget. Yeah, it, we didn't budget. So on that line, we've recognized, when I say recognized, that means that's between cash receipts and AR balance. Mm -hmm. That's the total that we received in FY23 between the cash receipts and the AR. Right. Um, so even though the budget, when the budget was prepared, we did not budget any revenue coming in for major facilities. We received the revenue, which goes towards those upgrades um, for capacity. Let me just. Okay. Um, I just. Let me find. I mean, I totally understand recognizing revenue. I get that piece. I just don't understand. If so, you're saying that it's not budgeted, how do I have a budget revenue and expense column? But I'm probably not going to get it. So, I'm no, no. Um, so for the um, budget, we budget for like the user fees, the connection charges, the plan reviews, um, any grants. That's what's in the budgeted revenues. But you're so saying we don't things. budget, but you're saying no, no, we, we don't, don't budget. We don't budget for the major facility fees. That revenue line, that one revenue line, we do not budget for. Okay. But all the others, the user fees, the connection charges, the plan reviews, other miscellaneous income, like in, um, interest income, right. that's part of the revenue budget. But it comes into the sewer fund, yes. right? So then in, it's still in my mind. You even though you didn't budget for that revenue, you received it. Yeah. So you received revenue that was not budgeted for mm -hmm. in expense of the budgeted revenue and expenses. It seems it wouldn't be zero. It appears to me it would be well, a positive variance. Just that one revenue line. Okay. Okay. Um, like so we had balanced budgets. So we budgeted nine point eight million for the expense and the revenue. Of that 98.4 million, none of it was budgeted for the major facility fees. That just shows that we received the 7 million in major facility fees. So right now, what's my actual numbers less the major facility fees?
I won't belabor it. You know, so everybody else is clear. I'm just, I'm just diss on this one. We can move on to the, any other questions and anything else that you want to bring uh, I, just, I just wanted to encourage uh, Councilwoman Brian Moore, you're not dense. I'm <laughs> I'm trying to track with you because I understand what you're saying. So uh, yeah, any clarification is helpful. And thank you for asking those questions. All right. Well, I do have a question. How are we doing on water smart signups? I don't know how we're doing on it. We it went out on the bill. We put a little blurbage on the bill for it. I have I I don't track. I have not tracked the water signups for it. And is that that Bobby, you you all don't do that. That is at uh, the The resident would sign up. We we don't know when they sign up unless we go and look. We have to log in and look for it. But I mean, we are doing a push for that. There was it on the bill, and I know there's um, Michelle is working on an announcement. I know they're going to do a, a push out on social media on that, but I didn't know if there was a percentage um, that of people who have signed up before we did the push. Last number was around 500, just under 500. 500 out of 3,500. Yeah, it's like 490 some. Okay. Yeah. So I think that. Oh, I just think that is such a great resource um, and to have. Uh, and, and I do understand people are a little um, squeamish about giving out more information, but boy, and I think that can save people a lot of money if that is, uh, if they sign up for that, just in case they have a leak. All right, any other questions? All right, thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right, next up is uh, Director Phipps. All right, any Mayor questions Duncan? for Director Phipps? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Wildlife <laughs> Habitat logo. I would really love to see that on a car tag or something. I don't know if we get revenue. Do you see specialized tags? I mean, I don't know what we're you know, doing with the Bird City designation in the Sustainable Maryland. But if we could do something with that shirts, little yard flags or something, it would be great. If it is the will of the council, I will start that tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you would. Any other questions? She's I think she's asking. For Are you asking us to do? I mean, do you have a plan, or do you want to bring us a plan? Our town clerk has already begun research on how to do that. And uh, we got in touch with Ocean City's uh, city clerk as far as getting it on a license plate, as far as merchandising it on uh, t-shirts and other paraphernalia. Uh, we have the arts work group who do this all the time, so we have resources to tap into. Do you think that? Um, we could receive, since there is an interest right here, do you think that we could maybe receive some more information on that, especially if the clerk has reached out uh, for license plates and merchandise? Who would it be, who would it be sold to, where, who's housing it, all of that good stuff, um, the funding, because this sounds like it's a project that may not have a budget uh, line, budget item on it, but it's, it is especially with the news that's coming up in a little bit. This is just one more piece to that great puzzle that we have been trying to build. So is that something that uh, warrants further research? 100%, Madam Mayor. Okay. When would you like an, up, an update on that? Tomorrow. <laughs> afternoon? Could it be afternoon? <laughs> you know what? It would be great. And we will get a consensus to see if, um, if this is something that is... Uh, 
I probably should ask your boss there um, to see if he will allow you to do um, some research on that. Is this something worth exploring on uh, since we are certified wildlife habitat for merchandising and perhaps getting it on license plate? All right, we've got to buy all means. I, I think the broader question as to like all of our efforts in these niche items is what does it do for our residents and, and the town? I, I'm in support of any answer to that question because we could probably endlessly get pieces of flair, uh, so to speak, as we, um, I mean, there's all sorts of organizations we can join and get certifications from, but I think, you know, any way we can look at the things that we've already done, how do they benefit our residents in the town? And to that being yes, and any opportunities for the future, things should be looked at through that lens, so yeah. All right. And yes, and Councilman Trollander, that was my, my um, thought behind it. We got all these designations, but nobody's aware of them. They sit here in, in the town council and maybe someone may have heard of it outside of it, but bringing awareness to it was the thought behind it and potentially getting revenue from it, if we could, would be great. And Councilman Jenkins? Uh, I would concur with both uh, Councilwoman uh, Evelyn uh, Bryant Ward's and Councilman Bryant's comments because it is a there is I think an issue of there's an education gap. But I think all this goes to helping folks understand what's going on, and this is a good time since we're going to be updating the website shortly. So, fantastic. Another way, another way to get our folks engaged in our community. So and, the short answer is yes. Okay, and. Uh, Director Phipps, in all seriousness, um, uh, when it is appropriate, when you have the time to do that, that would be great. Um, you do not have to do it tomorrow. Whenever you have the information, we'll put it on. <laughs> I know. Um, prioritize. I, I see you're I'm getting the side eye from your boss. So whatever um, works into your schedule, this is something that may be taking a little bit longer. But um, if the wheels are already in motion, You've got a consensus to move uh, um, ahead and explore uh, possibilities. Yes, ma'am. All right. Any other questions? Thank you very much. And last but certainly not least, our Director of uh, Human Resources. Do we have any questions for um, Ms. Kennedy, Director Kennedy? Uh, go ahead. Uh, Councilman Matt Trollinger Ward, too. Uh, thank you for your report. I was curious. Um, there were it's like two candidates in one of the positions that didn't pass a background check. Mm -hmm. And so we had to kind of move on. Mm -hmm. um, would we, is it normal to, to do the background check after we've offered? Or is yeah. that? Yes. The, the laws actually say that we can't do any kind of background or medical exams or even collect any kind of medical information, uh, anything that's sensitive until after we've given them a conditional offer. And then once they have a conditional offer, um, they sign a release and that pretty much opens our door to dig into whatever we need um, for each position. But yeah, there, it's, it, at the federal level, it's very clear that we can't we can't consume information on a candidate without their knowledge or permission, or for them to know that there's an actual offer on the table that there's an incentive for them. Um, there are publicly accessible and that things that are 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 public knowledge that would this is surpassing that. So, for example, mm -hmm. if they have things that are out in the public, we are doing that research ahead of time before making an offer, right? Or so, no, that's best to just wait for the background check. Correct. Yeah. And 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 typical HR best practices now too is not to try to look at somebody's social media or do any of those kind of looks before um before we've had any kind of interactions with candidates because that brings in a lot of unconscious bias and um discrimination potential. So yeah, it's usually best to keep completely hands off until that's somebody you've assessed based just on their knowledge and skills and abilities before taking any kind of steps like that. Social media oh. accounts or any like, you know, um not private stuff, but just publicly available information that is accessed 
but that's okay. Yeah, I, I understand, yeah. and I think that's a good policy. Thank mm -hmm. you. Any other questions? Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate that. That brings us to matters of information. Um, Miss Minor, Centennial Street and St. Mary's Four Way stop. Just a real quick update. We, uh, based on the traffic study done by Mead and Hunt several years ago, um, it was determined that a four way stop was warranted at Centennial Street and St. Mary's Avenue. So we are going to start the installation. You've probably seen the communication campaign today with the elect electronic signs out. Um, we'll be doing social media messaging, visuals, town web page updates, news releases, and FAQs. Um, the temporary delays, um, not anticipating a lot. Um, the main part of the construction is going to be on August 21st, weather permitting. Um, the intersection will remain open. There will be flaggers out there. But you may see some um, construction in the area before then while they're out there. Marking things, putting up poles, things of that nature. So, with uh, we want this completed when school starts on August twenty eighth. Excellent. Has the and I know the chief is is here. Has the stop, four way stop at Glen Alban and St Mary's uh, been successful? I would think so. And and we share some statistics with Michelle about it. There's been zero reported crashes since September of last or uh, September of 2022 and zero reported crashes for uh, 2023 so far. Knock on wood. Good. Yeah, I know that was a change of behavior as well when you're putting up the stop sign. So it will take a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Madam Mayor. So um, at the four way on Glen Aubin and um, St. Mary's on the I guess you would say the northbound side, they put that line so far back. Every other line is closer to the intersection so you can see what's coming, but that one line is further back. I hope they make it even on the at St. Mary's and Centennial because that I'm concerned about that one because people pass the white line that says stop here, you know, and they go up further. So you don't know if they're going to run that stop sign or what's happening. So that was just a, a weird dynamic that they would put that one particular one so far back. The challenge was, and I, I had them bring up the uh, Google Earth uh, image, and one of the things you will note, and and part of the there was a question about why we why we didn't put crosswalks in associated with everything. But if you'll notice on the northbound side on St. Mary's Avenue, um, the sidewalk, if if the, if you could bring your cursor down to the southern side of the intersection, keep going a little bit farther south right there, a little bit farther north, you see where the sidewalk mm -hmm. The sidewalk actually comes into that inner, the ramp down comes into that intersection way back where that arrow is. And so you see that that's where the sidewalk goes right there. That's why the line is there? Um, th stop. They tried to make it, you're supposed to have the stop bar so that they stop for where the crossing is in front. And so when they installed the stop bar, because of where the ramp going across the street is and nothing over in that intersection matches up and so. what's really challenging is we don't own glen alban yeah. on that side the county owns glen alban we own saint mary's and theoretically we own glen alban going down to 301. the county's claiming that now so they're <laughs> claiming that the interesting piece was if you, we were talking about taking the sidewalk around the corner on the Glen Alban side, where you see it coming Glen Alban East, Glen Alban East, the sidewalk ends right there, kind of just beyond the stop bar on the, on the other side, Kelly, right there. It ends right there. We were talking about bringing the sidewalk around, except there's all kinds of utilities. And if you see, if you notice right there by the stuff, that's a utility pole. 
right where we would need to come across. We would have to move a utility pole in order to get to utilize that on the other side. So in order to straighten this all out, we would have to move curb and gutter. We'd have to really put in handicap ramps that were closer to the intersection on both sides and then tie it across over to none of the intersections had viable and the challenge with a crosswalk just like it is we're fixing one of the corners up at centennial um on the 15th i think i said 17 something like this 16. we have to fix one of the the uh, uh, uh the handicap ramps on one of the corners up at Glen Almond. I mean, excuse me, at uh, Centennial at St. Mary's. Here, it would take basically major upgrades to that intersection, sadly enough, in order to straighten this out. And that being said, we would have to work with the county and try to get things with the county because of the ownership interest. We have a 30 foot right of way for St. Mary's Avenue. And so a lot of that sidewalk right there would actually be on the county's uh, side. So it's it's a little bit more challenging getting those projects going, but I that that was the reason for the stop part. Thank you, so appreciate that. Yeah. All right, any other questions? I think Councilman Jenkins. Oh, Councilman Jenkins. Thank you uh, again uh, from Ward 4, Dave Jenkins. I, while we're on transportation, thank you, uh, uh, Ms. Myler, about this update. That, that's Great, and I'm glad you're obviously doing the public outreach. Probably a, a bridge too far, or maybe not at this time, but do we have any idea when the state's going to turn on the signal at 488 and Radio Station Road? Thursday. This coming Thursday? Yes. Okay. And do we have any idea when the uh, DR Horton's going to build the, the, the signal at Willow Lane and Charles Street and their intersection. Do we have any any notion when that's going to happen? I have not aware. Not aware. Uh, yeah, I have no update. <clears throat> Thank you. Great. Any other questions? Nice. Thank you for that news. Appreciate that. All right, Chief, come on down. If you want to take that um, mic off there, that's good. Thank you. And why don't you just make yourself comfy? <laughs> it looks like you've got several requests. All right. Well, good evening, Mayor and Council. Good evening. Uh, the agency, as you know, has a series of purchases tonight, mostly related to our vehicles. Uh, we need to make sure that we uh, uh, get in line as quick as we can because of supply issues we're seeing with vehicles and with some of the other things that chips like radios. We also want to get this done before there's any more price increases. Uh, all of the requests uh, tonight are inclusive of the FY24 budget and was approved. Uh, because of the rising cost, uh, this series of purchases will go over our budget by about $1,400. We're not asking for any more money. We'll just absorb it someplace else, having a bottom line budget. Uh, during the FY24 budget presentation, the La Plata Police Department budgeted five new police vehicles. Tonight, we're only asking for four. Uh, it is the agency's recommendation to purchase four Dodge Durangos through the Maryland state contract awarded to Chriswell Fleet of Gaithersburg. Uh, the cost of the purchase is $161,256. And as I noted, uh, this was inclusive in our budget uh, request and was approved. All right, any questions for the chief? Thank you, Madam Mayor. So you budgeted for five and you're only asking for four. Are you going to come back for the fifth one? I don't think so. Uh, one of the things we looked at and Karina and I exchanged some emails on Sunday, uh, we, we see the price of everything going up. We believe it's going to be tight, but we believe we can get by with the four that we have coming in and these four that we're ordering. So uh, barring, uh, you know, a car being totaled or something along those lines, we don't plan to come back to the council and ask for the fifth vehicle. Okay. Lieutenant Norris, you're not going to crash a vehicle, are you? No, ma'am. I've seen you drive. One of those new ones is supposed to be mine, so I like to baby my vehicle. <laughs> uh, um, do we have a consensus to move this forward to legislation? Yes. 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 Good to, all right, yes. we'll move that forward. 
Thank you very much. Next on the purchasing of uplifting, upfitting, sorry, not glasses aren't on. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, during the FY24 budget preparation, the Little Plate Appearance Department budgeted for the upfitting of eight new police vehicles, four from the FY23 budget, and then four from the, uh, the vehicles that were just approved. Historically, the upfitter has asked us to wait until the new vehicle VIN numbers are generated before we move forward with ordering our equipment. Uh, however, uh, our upfitter, who we've been doing business with for approximately eight years, let us know that the both equipment and labor uh, for the upfitting of cruisers was going to increase. Uh, they have extended the offer to us to uh, uh, buy all the equipment, and this includes the in-car cameras, and lock in the labor rates at the current price instead of splitting this between uh, two different purchases. So it's our recommendation uh, that we purchase the upfitting equipment for eight Dodge Durangos, five will be marked, three will be unmarked, uh, utilizing the Safeware contract. Uh, it's important for uh, for us, and, and it is, I think, for the, uh, the town. Uh, Frontline Mobile Tech, who we have been doing business with, is both an authorized Motorola and Panasonic, Panasonic installer. So all the work that they perform in our on our vehicles is 100% guaranteed. When I first got here, uh, that wasn't the case. So if you had a radio problem, one installer was pointing the fingers at another. This is one stop shopping for us and it works very well. All right, any questions for the chief? All right, do I have a consensus to move forward with the upfitting of uh, the vehicles? Right. Yes. yes. Councilman Jenkins? Yes. All right, I am a yes as well. And that gives us that brings us to the purchase of the Motorola radios. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, during FY24 budget preparation, the Little Plate Police Department budgeted for four new portable radios and eight new mobile radios. Uh, it is the agency's recommendation to purchase these uh, radios utilizing the Baltimore City Motorola Equipment Master Purchase Agreement. Uh, the total cost is $89,963.56. As you know, there's only one manufacturer of radios for police vehicles, that is Motorola. Years ago, Ericsson used to make them. Uh, so it would be sole, uh, kind of a sole source purchase. However, the Baltimore City contract provides us with about a 25% discount on what we're purchasing. So uh, the funds for the radios were included in the FY24 budget and Baltimore City has kindly allowed us to piggyback on their contract. Thank you for that. Any questions uh, on the Motorola radio purchase? We will question. Okay. Okay. Sorry. No, that's all right. So when we when the Department of Emergency Services update their communication capabilities, does that so we buy these um, radios? Does that make our radios not work? It could, but we we're in lockstep with them. There's been no word uh, coming from emergency service or the sheriff's department about moving towards a new radio. This is very expensive to do, and we've been phasing this in almost my entire tenure here mm -hmm. of moving to this new system. Uh, and as we all know, on 9-11, we learned a lot about having the uh, ability to have interagency uh, communications. Mm -hmm. So this allows us to do that. And it's, you said about 16 years that it should last us somewhere? Yeah, at, at, that, that's the minimums. It should last for two cruisers. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other questions? All right. I'm looking for a consensus to move this forward to legislation. Councilman Goldsmith? Okay. Yes. Councilman Trump. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes. And all right. And I am a yes as well. And our last one. Uh, for the police department is the computer purchase for Panasonic Tough Book. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, the Plato Police Department is recommending the purchase of seven Panasonic Tough Book uh, FZ55 laptop computers. Uh, these computers are the lifeline for our communications and intelligence for officers in their vehicles. Uh, we buy ruggedized computers because they're able to stand up to the weather extremes of heat and cold that a uh, a computer in a cruiser would uh, have to endure. Uh, we would be buying these computers from Frontline Mobile Tech, a certified Panasonic dealer. The cost is $3,554 each. 
a total of $24,878. The purchase would be in concert with the GSA Schedule 70 uh, contract. All right, any questions on this item? All right, looking for a consensus. All right, I've got thumbs up and uh, Councilman Challenger. Yes. Yes. Oh, all right, we got it there. Even jump the gun on that one. All right, thank you. That it is a consensus to move it forward to legislation. Thank you so much. And next is B City USA affiliation with a new B Beehive Salt Dome. Just saying. Sorry. You can you can stand, sit, do what you want. All right. Can you tell us a little bit about B City USA affiliation and what the ask is tonight? Yes, Madam Mayor. B City USA is a um, nationally recognized uh, certification for bee friendly practices, most of which we are already doing in the course of our Bird City USA or our Bird City Maryland efforts and uh, Tree City USA. So this is just consistent in the birds, bees and trees triumvirate. Um, this has been on our green team's action plan since 2021. It is also um, in compliance with the comprehensive code or the uh, comprehensive plan as far as providing opportunities for citizens and businesses to engage in uh, sustainable measures. It is a healthy habitats group of uh, uh, Keep a Plate of Beautiful. Um, it did kind of languish there for a couple of years until we had a volunteer who was willing to, to commit the time to chair it. And that came in the form of Cassandra Nor uh, Morris, um, who came in blind. She is not a bee expert. She is not a pollinator expert of any sort, but she was willing to investigate and learn and figure out how to do this. Um, she, through her enthusiasm, we attracted the interest of the Bee Campus program at um, at CSM. So they joined on as advisors. Also, a couple of our uh, advisors from the existing Healthy Habitats group joined in. And then suddenly we had a team of six people working on B City USA certification. So, so we're looking for a consensus to uh, proceed with the application fee. They're asking for $200 for the application fee and to move forward that we are going to become a B City uh, USA affiliate. We good? All right. Yes. And Councilman Jenkins? Yes. yes. And I am enthusiastically saying yes. And, and I'll make sure we get some Bs on that graphic for the license plate. I love that. Thank you very much. All right. That brings us to our legislation. Resolution 23-27, La Plata Police Department fiscal year 2024 vehicle purchase for introduction and consideration of adoption. Mr. Manuel. Yes, Madam Mayor, Town Council, a resolution concerning La Plata Police Department fiscal year 2024 vehicle purchase for the purpose of authorizing the town manager to enter into a contract purchase agreement of utility vehicles for the La Plata Police Department and all matters generally relating thereto. Thank you very much. Do I have a motion to adopt this legislation? Madam Mayor? Yes. I move that we adopt Resolution 23-27, La Plata Police Department Fiscal Year 2024 Vehicle Purchase as presented. Thank you very much. Do I have a second? Second. All right. Any uh, further comments? All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Next is Resolution 23-28. Yes, Madam Mayor, La Plata Police Department vehicle upfitting and related equipment. This item is for introduction and consideration of adoption. A resolution concerning La Plata Police Department vehicle upfitting and related equipment for the purpose of authorizing the town manager to enter into a contract purchase agreement with a professional police upfitting company for the acquisition and installation of the equipment necessary for eight police vehicles and all matters generally relating thereto. Thank you very much. Do I have a motion to adopt resolution 23-28? Madam Mayor. Madam Mayor, I recommend we adopt resolution 23-28 for Plato Police Department vehicle upfitting and related equipment. Fantastic. Do I have a second? Second. <laughs> All right. Any, uh, I love this. Uh, any um, discussion? All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any aye. Motion carries, brings us to resolution 23-29 for consideration of adoption. 
Yes, Madam Mayor, Town Council, a resolution concerning La Plata Police Department computer purchase for the purpose of authorizing the town manager to enter into a contract purchase agreement for the purchase of seven notebook computers for installation and use in La Plata Police Department vehicles and all matters generally relating thereto. Thank you very much. Do I have a motion to adopt resolution 23-29 as presented? Madam Mayor, yes, I move that we adopt resolution 23-29, the play to police department computer purchase as presented. Thank you very much. Do I have a second? Second. All right. All in fa uh, any discussion? All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. And that brings us to, oh, yet another one. Resolution 23-30 for consideration of adoption. Yes, Madam Mayor, Town Council, a resolution concerning La Plata Police Department purchase of Motorola radios for the purpose of authorizing the town manager to enter into a contract purchase agreement for the purchase of Motorola mobile radios, portable radios, and additional parts and accessories for the La Plata Police Department and all matters generally related thereto. Thank you very much. Do I have a motion uh, to adopt resolution 23-30 as presented? Madam Mayor, I make a motion to adopt resolution 2330 as presented the La Plata Police Department purchase of Motorola radios. Thank you very much. Do I have a second? Second. All right. Any discussion? All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Brings us to our final resolution for the evening, resolution 23-26 for consideration of uh, adoption. Yes, Madam Mayor, Town Council, a resolution concerning B City USA affiliation for the purpose of enhancing understanding among local government staff and the public about the vital role the po that pollinators play and what each of us can do to sustain them in designating the town of La Plata as a B City USA affiliate and all matters generally related thereto. Thank you very much. Do I have a motion to adopt resolution 23-26 as presented? Madam Mayor. Yes. I move that we adopt resolution 23-26 B-City USA affiliation as presented. Thank you very much. Do I have a second? Second. All right. Uh, any discussion? All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. That brings us to the commission reports. Councilman Goldsmith. Yeah, the design review board last meeting, I uh, reviewed the renovation of the dash in on 301, and they'll be putting in a new car wash as well. So uh, uh, that's moving forward. Thank you very much. Uh, Councilman Trollinger. No committee report. Okay. Councilman Bryant Ward. No. Councilman Jenkins. Uh, no commission report. All right, um, and I do have a report for upcoming. First of all, uh, if you have not seen, the bollards are put back up in front of Panda Express. They were put up over the weekend, for, and I am sure that many are excited about that. It is a safety concern, and I spoke with State Highway. They put it up on Sunday, so that was wonderful. Um, as indicated just a bit ago, uh, 488, we will be getting the new uh, traffic light, and that will the uh, State Highway has said that will become operational on Thursday, the 27th. So that is going to be uh, something new there. So it's going to be um, a, a learning curve for many. Um, great news we received from the Transportation Planning Board. They approved $1.4 million for the La Plata bikeway radio station road side path this project will construct a continuous 10 foot wide buffered bike bikeway shared use path for 2.25 miles connecting schools neighborhoods and a variety of recreational and natural areas um, in the east of downtown La Plata so that was exciting we've got this weekend uh, this Friday, Girl Crush is our band on this Friday, and the following Friday is the Hometown Band. As mentioned, August 1st, Tuesday is our National Night Out, where we will be out in the community along with our first responders. Um, August 8th, 
Uncle Devin Show. He is coming here. It's an interactive musical experience for children by renowned dr drummer and percussionist Devin Walker. The show cultivates the minds of children through percussion instruments and is a dynamic cross between DC's trouble funk and schoolhouse rock. So you had me at Schoolhouse Rock. That one sounded interesting. And then on August 10th, to continue with the kids' fitness classes, you've got Charles County Parks and Recreation Move and Groove, where your kids can run, jump, and play to the sound of music. And they will play short, exciting games to get your little ones moving and grooving. And then on August 7th, we are all invited to the ribbon cutting of uh, Charles County's first charter school and it is phoenix international school of the arts uh they have a school it's opening at 95 catalpa drive and this is going to have 175 students there 100 uh, sixth graders 57th graders and 25 eighth graders where they will be exposed to the arts such as uh, music through instruments, singing, um, acting, dance. Uh, they have uh, media there and it's really an exciting time uh, and it should be a, a pretty big deal. So we are inviting you all out to the ribbon cutting at 5 p.m. on August 7th. And with that said, um, I have nothing else, and I move to adjourn this meeting. Thank you all for coming, and have a safe evening. Meeting adjourned. Oh, my goodness. Are you going to be able to make it to the um, ribbon cutting on the 7th? Oh. Wow.